The HMS Antelope was a Type 21 frigate which was part of the Royal Navy Task Force to retake the Falkland Islands in 1982. She was sunk on the 24th of May in the same year. The construction of HMS Antelope started on the 23rd of March 1971 in the English city of Southampton. She cost the Royal Navy over £14 million to build. She belonged to the Type 21 group of A-class frigates, of which they were eight of. The Type 21 frigates were ordered in 1969 and all eight were built and commissioned by the end of 1978. HMS Antelope was ordered on the 11th of May 1970 and her keel was laid down on March 23, 1971. She was launched to sea on March 16, 1972 and was later accepted into the ranks of the Royal Navy on June 30, 1975. She was then formally commissioned in July of that same year. She was known as a patrol frigate and was capable of close to shore operation as well as open sea services. HMS Antelope's flight deck was able to have a medium lift helicopter. This was originally a Westland Wasp but later a Westland Lynx was put onto the deck as it was an upgrade from its predecessor. The Antelope was fitted with a SeaCat surface to air missile launcher, one 4.5 inch Mark 8 deck gun, two triple tube torpedoes for engaging any enemy submarines as well as two 20mm autocannons for anti-air defence. She was capable of protecting the main battle fleet, suppressing enemy submarines and tracking enemy ships on the surface. She was however never fitted with an Exocet anti-ship missile launcher unlike her sister ships. Regardless of this, the warship was a multi-role ship which could deny airspace to the enemy and help protect a main battle group from anything on the sea. The Antelope was 384 feet long with a draft of 19 feet and 6 inches. She had a water displacement of 3,250 tonnes on a full load. She was powered by two Rolls-Royce Olympus and two Rolls-Royce Tyne RM1A gas turbines giving the ship a top speed of 32 knots and had a very respectable range of 4,000 nautical miles. She also housed a crew of around 177 personnel. In 1977, HMS Antelope attended the Queen's Silver Jubilee Review. During this time, the Antelope was part of the 7th Frigate Squadron. Um, doing exercises and then we got told uh, we're going back to Plymouth to store up and we're going to the Falklands and everybody went like everywhere, whereabouts is that near Scotland, you know? <laughs> The Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher ordered a large task force to retake the islands, of which the Antelope was a part of. The Antelope arrived at the Falklands on May the 21st, and two days later was sent into the San Carlos water to help with the defence of the beach landings. However, this day would be one of her last at sea, as she was targeted by the Argentine Air Force with four A-4 Skyhawk fighter bombers from the Argentine Group 05. On the 23rd of May, the Argentine A-4 Skyhawk bombers began two bombing runs on her. The first run was met with a single 1,000 pound bomb hitting the Antelope's starboard side, killing one crew member, a steward by the name of Mark Stevens. This bomb did not detonate however and one of the pilots broke off their attack after narrowly avoiding a SeaCat missile that exploded just under his port side wing. The pilot managed to escape back to Rio Galagos. The second aircraft was also hit by small arms fire and also retreated. The second run from the Skyhawks came minutes later into the starboard side. One of the aircraft was hit by the Antelope's 20mm cannons before crashing into the ship's main mast, killing the pilot instantly. However, the pilot managed to hit the ship with another thousand pound bomb, which managed to pierce the hull, but also, like the first bomb, it didn't explode. The frigate fired another sea cat at what they believed to be another Skyhawk, but this turned out to be the first pilot from the first run, who was flying back to Rio Galagos. The SeaCat missile missed the fleeing aircraft by 10 metres. After these attacks, the Antelope sailed to a more sheltered area of water so that the damage could be assessed and the bomb disposal teams could work on trying to defuse the bombs. One of the bombs was impossible to reach due to wreckage. The other bomb was accessible but was considered to be in a dangerous condition. The team attempted to defuse the bomb three times with no success, but on the fourth attempt they tried to use a small explosive charge in a controlled detonation. However, this proved to be a huge mistake as the bomb exploded, killing Staff Sergeant James Prescott and injuring Warrant Officer Phillips, who was the second member of the bomb disposal team. 
The ship was then torn up open with the water line to the ship's funnel. The blast caused a serious fire to break out in both the ship's engine rooms, which spread rapidly through the ship. The ship lost power and Commander Nick Tobin gave the order to abandon ship. Yeah, so um, we've obviously down there. I was down the forward machinery space, myself and another lad. Um, and in this machinery space, there's two diesel generators, an evaporator, which turns salt water into fresh water, and a boiler, so it's the boiler that supplies steam to the ship. And um, we get the old air raid warning red, because um, the SAS were in Chile, and the, they obviously picked up that they'd, uh, they'd left, or I've since found out that the RAF were in Chile and had planes or a plane flying about and um, also a radar station in Chile. So we knew they were coming, and it was air raid warning red. Um, and the next thing, thud, thud, 2,000-pound bombs hit, and literally they were right above me. Um, one went through the PO's mess, straight through the PO's mess, um, hit a beer barrel that killed my mate, and then landed on a, a guy's bed. Then the other one hit the air conditioning plant and set all the... Uh, alarms off for the nuclear attack and then I thought that a guy um, at, at, the, at the same time the guy was uh, dropping sandwiches down to us so I'm basically I stroke C there and I've got uh, earphones on so I can communicate to the machinery control room and guys in the other compartments so and I'm not being here I typed on top of them and they went what are you doing I went if I go you might survive if you go we all go and then um, when we got after the thud, don't know how long it was, probably a couple of minutes, maybe five, we suddenly, uh, the ship turned right. Well, of course, our natural thinking is it's going to tip over. And I went, I pointed to the rag pads and went, let's get out of here. So I went up to the top hatch and then a guy called George, he goes, don't worry. He goes, the bombs landed on my bed. He said, it hasn't gone off. Um, <laughs> And the ship went upright. Uh, and when they found this bomb, it was they could hear ticking. So they thought it was it was timed, but it wasn't. It was a starter motor for the light above his bed. <laughs> With men rushing to get off the burning ship, HMS Fearless sent a Mark II LCVP landing craft to help rescue the men. The task force commander, Admiral Sir John Fieldhouse, awarded Corporal Alan White a commendation for his part in saving 42 members of the Antelope's crew. The landing craft that was used is now in Portsmouth Royal Marine Museum with a detailed account of the Corporal's mission he took part in. All the crew were now off the ship, with the last being Commander Tobin, although luckily five minutes after he got off the ship, her magazine exploded. However, all throughout the night, explosions continued on, the following morning she was still afloat, but her keel had broken and she was becoming a heap of twisted metal. Later that day she broke in half and sank to the bottom of the sea. The fearless landing craft came alongside um, and they tried to rig, rig firefighting gear and I looked at this uh, raging inferno coming up the front and I thought, you ain't going to put this fire out. And I thought, I'm going to go and help you. So I was the first one off and I'm... It wasn't to help them. I did, I did help them, but that wasn't the reason. I was the first one off, and everybody followed me. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then they would have done the same. They knew, you know, everybody knew. There's no way you could have put that fire out. And uh, then, uh, yeah, I've got to be a bit careful what I say. Something happened about abandoned ship, and somebody got told where to go. We'll leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, we'll leave it there. And then. Um, we got took on the Fearless and um, went on the Fearless uh, for the night. Personally, we did. Some went to other ships, but the Fearless were brilliant, absolutely brilliant to us. And uh, unfortunately, um, the guys who rescued us, um, six out of the eight, I think, uh, died when the um, Fearless landing craft got bombed the same day as the Galahad. The ship was in service to the Royal Navy just over 10 years and was now a wreck at the bottom of the sea. 
In January 2002, a team of divers from HMS Montrose swam to the resting place of HMS Antelope and replaced her naval ensign. The Antelope's wreckage is now a prohibited area under the Falkland Islands Protection of Wrecks Act, which provides protection to designated shipwrecks within British territorial waters. Despite HMS Antelope only being active in the Falkland War for a matter of days, it is worth noting that every sailor should be honoured for their bravery and sacrifice. They were willing to sail all the way down to the South Atlantic and give their lives for the people of the Falkland Islands. The images and video of the antelope is some of the most iconic and important images we have seen from the war, and also a testament of what happened in any war. The men who lost their lives will forever be in our memory, and the men who survived will always be seen as our heroes, and should be proud of what they did in the name of freedom. This has been Paul with Hidden History, and uh, thank you for watching.